I am interrupting my planned programming yet again. Sorry, Brian White, your interview will have to be moved till tomorrow and Thursday. So you keep a lookout for those two interviews with Brian because they were really good, but they aren't necessarily newsworthy. And I think there's more important news going on right now today. I saw a lot of negativity on X today. I saw a lot of negativity in the comments this morning from my show this morning. And I really thought it was important to address it. Um, let me start by saying that Tesla is still at 61 PE, okay? This is a stock that is not being tremendously undervalued. We can make a lot of arguments for why that is true. And I could say all day long that it's worth 410 or 820 or any other number you wanna pick and should be at a PE of 200 or 150. There are stocks out there that are like that. NVIDIA is one of them. So with the growth trajectory and all the things that could happen in the future, you could put a huge PE on Tesla. But there are some negative things going on, and I think we should talk about those. And I think we should talk about the positive things that are going on. Um, the, but And I'm particularly doing this show right now at this time because Tesla fell off a cliff this morning. <laughs> and it's been dramatically underperforming its peers, the indexes, and even the Kathy Woodstocks for the last 10 days at a time where every possible analysis of the fundamentals that I would do would suggest it should be outperforming. Let's start with those reasons after I say hello. This is Randy Kirk. Please hit like and subscribe and notify. Uh, tonight, of course, I got Nick Nicholas uh, Gibbs on with me to help celebrate the good news. And there's always good news, even on a day when Tesla might end up down five points. Um, so we'll we'll look at that good news when when Nicholas is on tonight. And then, um, you know, for sure you want to buy some Cybertruck bottle openers. You know, I where is here? It is right here. You know, sometimes I really should keep these things closer at hand. Um, really unbelievable. Somebody said the other day that it looked that it didn't look like it was very solid. But this thing is. Are you kidding me? It's solid stainless steel, three millimeters. I mean, it's. Uh, really, really solid. Anyway, and it's a huge magnet on the back, et cetera. I think you know the pitch by now. So send me Randy, paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lowercase letters, letters, $25. If you just want the one because you need it for your refrigerator, get you know, two cost you $45. So you can give one to your best friend or to your brother or your sister-in-law. <clears throat> There's a lot of folks out there that would love to have this for their refrigerator. And then maybe you want three, four, five because you got more friends. Well, three is $65, four is 90 and 110 if you want five. So that's kind of the, the story. It's all down in the description below. And if you are way over there in Australia, you know, where I still haven't visited, someday I got to get there, or you're in Taiwan, or you're in China, Japan, you know, you're way over in that part of the world, I need 30 extra bucks for the freight. And if you're really, really not that far, but you know, like Canada, Mexico, Europe, it only takes 20 bucks to get it to you. Extra, throw that tw extra 20 bucks in when you pay. All right, that's it. Let's, uh, oh, and Patreon, 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 there's now a $3 level. Thank you for the, I think four or five people that have signed up over the last week at the $3 level, because now they have a chance to do that. Love to have you on board at any level you want. All right, let's talk about what's going on here. Let's start with those positives. Number one, the company beat on the numbers. Well, of course, the headlines didn't say that. They just said Tesla hits 500,000 or Tesla hits 1.8 million or whatever. No, there was no, never the word beat never showed up in any of the headlines. We'll talk about that a lot more in a minute. But they did. They beat on the headlines. That should have been enough to give the stock a bump. Number two, the launch of the Cybertruck. It couldn't have been better. I don't know how. I don't know how it could possibly have been better. The reviews that were done by multiple different influencers out there on, on YouTube were absolutely astounding. Absolutely. This is a breakthrough tech. This is way better than it was ever expected to be. There were so many things about the Cybertruck that were better. I mean, right down to a glove box where when it opens up automatically, it actually pulls out a little bit, making it easier for the driver to get to it. I mean, so many things on that truck that are, that that that's just kind of an afterthought. I mean, so many. Anyway, 
huge. Number three, the energy division is poised to, poised to add substantial earnings with announcements of the factory being built in Sh Shanghai and probable rumors right now from Bradford Ferguson saying that they're going to double capacity uh, from the original plan in Lathrop. Uh, number four, and the numbers and the profits on this stuff is amazing. Number four, FSD, RoboTaxi, Optimus, all in the wings, closing in on historic potential earnings. You know, where these things might have all, some of these things like FSD might have seemed like they were six months away or a year away five years ago. Well, now pretty much we know that they're darn close. So it's, so, but if they could happen at any moment, so there's got to be some kind of a premium for that. Um, and then Dojo, of course, I mean, not Dojo, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Optimus, the, the, yeah, it just goes on and on in terms of the number of videos that have come out of, on other robots, et cetera, that should be creating some excitement about Optimus. Number five, Dojo potential is hard to calculate, but Dan Ives says he's got 30% of current value for Dojo alone, and nobody else is talking about that, and it's huge. Huge potential. Number six, the NACS adoption. That means the competitive cars are going to be test. Or they're going to be charging at Tesla chargers. <laughs> then you got the supercharger rollout accelerating, creating massive future revenues and earnings. If the supercharger business was a business unto its own, you know, people have various calculations. I think we're going to hear from Larry Goldberg later this week or over the weekend with his calculation of what the valuation would be if that company were standing alone. It's, it's really, really big numbers uh, with, you know, tens or hundreds of billions of revenues coming in the future. And then you've got the rave reviews on the Model 3 Plus. Matt, real, super reviews on the Model 3 Plus. Uh, no negatives. I mean, I haven't seen a negative review, or, but nothing from the mainstream media, of course. Yes. And then you've got Model, the Model Y is the top selling vehicle of any kind worldwide. It has passed. Every other car, it's the number one, and it's an expensive car. It's a large sedan. It's a, I mean, it's an SUV. It's, it's a, it's a BEV. <laughs> this is news. All three of those things. The fact that it's the largest, the number one seller. The fact that it's a ex rel relatively expensive car. The fact that it's SUV, and the fact that it's a, an electric car, a, 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 a full on BEV. Oh yeah, where's the news? Are you seeing this on? Uh, no, you're not seeing it anywhere. Then you've got. Uh, the current capacity of 3 million vehicles. Does anybody really know that? I've done a couple of, of uh, videos on that now. I don't, even the community isn't talking about it. The capacity right now is 3 million vehicles. <laughs> All right. So we're sitting at 1.8. The capacity is 3 million. I don't know if we're going to get anywhere close to that next year, but that's what the capacity is. And we're going to be adding, I guess it looks like we're adding 4 million potential capacity to uh, Mexico as soon as they do that groundbreaking. And there's all kinds of rumors this morning that that is either really imminent or that it's not until second half. Take your pick. I don't know. All right. Then we've got the lithium refinery. This is number 11 of the list of good news. Okay. We have the lithium refinery and the cathode plants that are on the verge of production. Actually, it turns out I've got the number 11 twice. So that was number 12. And now we're on number 13. Semi-truck production, now likely later in 2024, or early 25, but it's coming. You know, yeah, you're not going to put a lot of money uh, into Tesla because of that promise, which keeps on kick, getting kicked back, but it is a positive. Number 14, more new products coming, according to Elon. Again, you can't, you can't monetize that, but more new products. This is going to be exciting. Number 14, the, now here's something you can't monetize. The Gen 3 vehicles are going to launch in late 2024 using revolutionary approaches to what is already the world's best manufacturer uh, in, in everything that they do. Their manufacturing is unparalleled on so many levels that you can't even count them all. And now they're going to add, add the unboxed process, which is just going to reduce the cost even more and as they go to 48 volt, as they go to steer by wire, as all the things that they've done on the Cybertruck that are going to be now put over onto the Gen 3 vehicle as well. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that I'm leaving out more than just insurance, used car sales, other IRA income, services income, wholesale and energy income, OEM sales of superchargers, and who knows what else. Oh, yeah, and licensing. Oh, and by the way, I did actually leave one out, and that was the income 
from the the uh, the um, 4680s. Once the 4680s are up and running, if we get to 100 gigabytes, it's 4.5 billion dollars a year in IRA income. So yeah, there's there's probably more. You guys add to it. Please let me know in the comments below. Uh, but let's go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna get as negative as I possibly can. What is really going on? Why is the stock underperforming right now? Why was it down so bad today? Well, number one, I believe by far is the press. They now see Elon Musk as a competitor and a turncoat. Okay, let that sink in. They see him as a competitor to the actual news business, okay, and to reporting, and they see him as a turncoat. He was the darling of the left, but he left the tribe and joined the other side. You don't get forgiven for that, ever. You've seen it happen, I'm sure, in your life where somebody decides that they're no longer going to believe X, they're going to believe Y, and the group that they used to hang out with over at X, no longer interested, don't like him anymore. He'll never be forgiven for that. Well, then he went further, and he clearly intends to destroy traditional methods of reporting and delivering the news. Yeah, yeah. You, now you have people like me that become the reporters. You've got all these you know, freelancers all over that are making money or not making money. Uh, you know, they're just citizen reporters that are doing all the report, the honest reporting, <laughs> real reporting, actually going out and finding out both sides and reporting. Yeah. And then it's going to be delivered, not through, you know, you know, newspapers are dead, magazines are dead, but it's not even going to be delivered through newspaper uh, portals on on the uh, on the uh, internet. It's not going to be delivered through a television and NBC broadcast. No, it's going to be delivered through X. That's where you're going to get your news. So uh, that kind of makes them a competitor. Yeah. So they're seeing their future, the companies that they work for, and their own personal reporting gigs in danger. I don't know if that could make them a little upset. To make motors worse. The products that he sells, that Elon Musk sells, like automobiles and energy and and um, what do you call it, uh, rockets and satellites and internet services and and phone services and all the things and energy services and all these kind of things, these are products that are disrupting the industries that are paying the money that puts these television and radio and newspaper type programs keep them in business. It's their advertisers. And those are threatened. They're not just threatened normally, like, oh, this person's a little cheaper, or this person's a little better or whatever, normal competition. Oh, no, 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 no. We're talking about disruption. We're talking about putting them out of business. It's a common thing for people like me to say, yeah, I don't see how GM stays in business. I don't see how Ford stays in business. <laughs> anyway, and by the way, GM, Ford, and Chrysler or Stellantis just pulled all their advertising from the Super Bowl. We're probably talking about $50 million in advertising that just went away. So this is just more evidence. And that just happened yesterday. Could that have impacted Are reporters on the phone going, oh my gosh, did you see that the big three pulled out of the Super Bowl? What does that mean for our future? Well, anyway, the number two set, the number two thing that I'm thinking is impacting things and might just be kind of culminating right now, and that is it's harder and harder to increase unit sales by 50% per year. You know, we got the law of large numbers. If you want to go from 500,000 to 750,000, that's not that hard. You want to go from 2 million to 3 million? That's a big increase. A couple of years from now, you want to go from 5 million to 7.5 million? That's a lot harder. In order to do that, you have to go down market. You have to find the customers at the lower price points. And that is what Elon has been doing for the last year. Or, and he might continue to do it this year. And it's squeezing margins. Well, the investing class is uncertain about how low those margins might go. Markets hate uncertainty. And Tesla is doing nothing to resolve that uncertainty. And so that is, now we're getting close to earnings day. And some people just probably get nervous and going, well, how, what might those margins be? And I've seen serious people say the margins might only be 15% and that the operating margins might drop to 6%. 
I don't think that's going to happen, but serious people have put that number out there. So that's an uncertainty. Markets hate uncertainty. All right, then we got the auto business is cyclical. And while it may be true that Tesla can continue to drive these large increases even in a recession, there's no actual, we, we, we got no way to prove it. We got, we don't know. Will that, will that happen? Will it not? We don't know. So there's some risk that Tesla will not increase anywhere close to 50% in 2024 and or 2025 due to a recession that people are now getting a little bit nervous about and that we started reporting on a few days ago. Um, I'm one of the first in the country to start talking about the possibility that we're going to have a recession this year. Now, remember what happened last year. Last year, everybody said recession, 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 every summer recession. Oh, will it be a soft landing, a hard landing, a medium recession, whatever. And uh, guess what? I was sitting there all alone looking stupid. Nope, no recession, not going to have a recession. Can't have a recession with these kind of job numbers. Never going to happen. Oh, guess what? All year long, no recession. Well, this year, I'm starting to say, hmm. You know, uh, the job numbers are getting a little slippery or a little softer, and we're seeing some issues with commodity prices, and we're seeing some issues with maybe people having to drop prices for the wrong reasons. And anyway, I gave a whole list already of this. This is not the place to go through that again, but I'm saying, hey, there's a chance. Maybe it's a 50% chance that we'll have a recession in the third quarter. Well, other people are now starting to get on that that, that wagon track. That uh, that put something they're getting they're they're agreeing <laughs> for for their own reasons for whatever reasons they're saying you know uh, it's looking a little soft so when that happens then the market gets a little skittish and we saw the market really skittish for the first six trading days so far and when they get when the market gets skittish uh, what's that old rule when uh, when uh, China coughs uh, America gets pneumonia or something like that well or is it with America coughs, the world gets pneumonia. Maybe that was it. Anyway, <laughs> when the market gets a little bit risk off, uh, they take it right out of the risky stocks like Tesla, what they consider to be the risky stocks like Tesla. Even though they got 23 billion in the bank, you know, then they can weather the recession, whatever, blah, blah, they're still considered risky. Okay. And then the, uh, then there is, uh, yeah. So FSD fatigue. Nobody's mentioning this. I'm going to be the first. Take this into consideration. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But we've got some fatigue problems. So FSD fatigue. The market has definitely been paying a premium for the promise of FSD and robotaxi. Six years ago, that premium was probably high. Five years ago, I think it was even still high. I think in 1991, when the, when the stock went to all-time highs, I think the FSD was and robotaxi was a part of that valuation. Well, even though you and I could look at it and go, wow, FSD is now really close. It's just been getting better and better and better. And oh my gosh, it passes the grandma test. And, you know, it's doing all these things. And boy, it's really close. And RoboTaxi can't be that far behind. The market's just like heard it and heard it and heard it. And I'm guessing that there's not as much of a premium, maybe no premium at all for the FSD RoboTaxi, even, the, even though, you know, some of the pundits will say, oh yeah, we see a big premium. Kathy Wood can say, oh yeah, it's most of the value of the stock. But I'm wondering if the investing class thinks that way at this point after this fatigue. And I think we also have 4680 fatigue. Same song, second verse. All right. Well, then you got the Elon Musk factor. Now, you know, I support Elon Musk every way you can think of. I think he's amazing. I think he's incredible, but he's human and he does things that are smart and things that are dumb. And he's created plenty of reasons for folks to be cautious about his intentions, his stability, and so forth. His intentions, what, where, is his, where is he putting his effort? What are his intentions for the future? What about his stability? We got the Isaacson uh, bio last year that called into question his emotional and psychological stability. And now we've got the Wall Street Journal with the whole thing about the drugs. So that's that drug thing came out a couple of days ago and it reignited some of the feelings that people had when they read the Isaacson book or saw the reports about what was in the Isaacson book. So now all of a sudden you're looking at the leader, this amazing guy, this person that seemingly can do magic 
you know, and has done magic over and over again, but uncertainty, uncertainty, uncertainty. So now he is also, in addition, over the last months, put up these warning signs about the economy and about the Cybertruck ramp, et cetera. So if we have, if we're going to believe him on the positives, we also, I guess we'd be foolish not to, you know, to ignore him on the negatives. I mean, if he says that it's going to be hard to ramp the Cybertruck, well, we would necessarily take him at his word if we're going to take him at his word on the positive stuff. So, yeah, I um, I think there's a lot of fatigue in this area as well. I think there's a lot of Elon has been wrong. He's been late. He's People say he's lied. He's never lied that I can find, uh, but he's been over optimistic. He's been way out. Well, guess what? I, I, let me tell you something. Look at all the other, just the auto companies. <laughs> just look at the auto companies and all the promised you know, EVs, BEVs, et cetera, that they were saying were going to come out. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> They're, oh, yeah, we're going to put that off now to 2028. I mean, you know, hundreds of, anyway, this guy executes, 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 consistently executes. He may be late, but he executes. And the other folks are sadly not even getting the product to market. And when they do, failure after failure after failure um, are much fewer units than anybody would have thought. Anyway, so, but why is this happening now? Why? Those are the three big negatives as far as I'm concerned, but why now? Well, I think the market, as I mentioned, is uh, going to price in more risk. A um, lot of enthusiasm at the end of 2024. You say, well, what happened over the weekend? You know, it's a long weekend, but sheesh. So I think the risk on a risk off mood happened for whatever reason when we came back from the long weekend um, and it's hitting Tesla harder as people are like, I don't know, not sure about this year. Well, and then the catalysts that all came true in the past two months were completely underreported in the press. I count this as a massive temporary setback to the stock. I'm not sure it's possible to overestimate how much it has cost stockholders in the last month and a half. Because if the consumer knew, if the investing public even knew how amazing the Cybertruck is and what the reports are and what the analysis is on the Cybertruck, if the investing public was really paying attention because if the general press, the regular press, whether it's the whether it's the investing press, whether it's the economic press, whether it's even the mainstream, just the NBCs and the CBSs of the world, if these people were reporting the robot story, forget forget about Optimus. If they were just reporting the robot story in the way that it should be reported right now, I think that the stock would be going up because the Optimus is obviously in the lead. Anybody can take a look at it and see it's in the lead. Well, and then there were no immediate hot stories to drive optimism. The only story right now is the guidance on units and the margins. That's what the hot story is. Everybody's waiting two weeks from tomorrow. What will be the guidance on units and what will be the margins? And then any surprises that might be announced. We got new products coming. Are we going to announce them? We got a Gen 3 vehicle coming. Are we going to set up a Gen 3 uh, preview day or re re reveal day? Is there going to be a date set? Uh, we got the Model 3 coming. Are we going to give a date for when those are going to be available? Is India, some people are saying India is going to be announced this week. I don't think that'll move the stock, but it, at least it'll be one more thing to be excited about. Is the if When is the Model 3 actually going to start to, delivering? Um, I don't think it'll move the stock much because I don't think that the, the uh, regular press will pick it up at all. So we need bigger announcements. We need an announcement like, 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 run rate. Yeah, we need a new picture of the gang out there, all however many of them are that are working on 4680, saying that they are now at the full on, fully ramped 100 gigawatt rate with a little note. This means $4.5 billion in money from the federal government in terms of this incentive from the IRA. That might move the stock. You got to tell them. You can't, you can't leave it up to them to figure it out. You got to say, oh, by the way, we're going to get $4.5 billion, half of what we're going to make this year. We're going to get that just 
in IRA money in 2024 because we're already at 100 and we're going to 200. And that'll be $9 billion in, in earnings. It'll just drop to the bottom line. Well, not earnings exactly, lower cost of goods, which we can either use to drop the price of our cars and our energy packs, or we can use it uh, just to, to put in the bank if we're selling our cars at the same price. Anyway, how about a date for the AI day three? That would maybe move the market a little bit. How about a full self-driving V12 rollout and commentary that's going to come from that, from the various people that'll be driving it? Maybe um, a Cybertruck ramp numbers, optimism. Maybe Elon coming out and going, you know what? The Cybertruck ramp is going way better than we thought it was going to go. And it looks like we're going to be able to get up to this number by midsummer or something. A little optimism. You know, it's okay, Elon. You can still be optimistic and wrong from time to time. You can be late. It's all right. We're all right with it. Don't let the naysayers talk you out of that optimism. Anyway, well, maybe my entire analysis today is completely wrong. And tomorrow the stock will go up by 10 and we'll all be going, what the heck? <laughs> maybe it'll go up by 20 tomorrow. I don't know. But that's how I see it today. Not based on one day, not based on one week, but based on really the last three or four weeks of how things have been going for Tesla stock. And there's at some point you have to wonder what is going on. By the way, all of these things are, I hate to use the word transitory. <laughs> all of these things don't affect the stock long term. Long term, if you get the numbers and you put the profits on the on, on the bottom line. And people can see what the profits are and they can see a projection of the profits. At some point, the stock will trade at the numbers it should trade at. So keep that in mind. Well, okay. Um, be sure to uh, check out the, our conversation at night with Nicholas Gibbs, where we will talk about all the news of the day and how the stock ended the day, et cetera. Uh, be sure to check in tomorrow when I will actually probably, almost certainly, put the Brian uh, White video up and then another uh, on Thursday. And then uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we had lots of good stuff coming. Uh, Jeff Lutz, undoubtedly, tomorrow night. So make sure that you hit subscribe and notify. Hit the like button. If you haven't already done that, we always like it if you hit the like button. And then join Patreon. Remember now, $3. That's just saying, you know, thank you, Randy. Want to support you. Want to help produce the channel. $5, I want to help you produce the channel, but yeah, I'd like to get one of your books on audio for free. And then $10, I really want to help you because I see what this is doing. It really helps me to think you know, think about the stock, gives me more information that I can actually use, some analysis that makes sense. Um, and I'd like to do that at the $10 level. And by the way, I would like to get one of those Cybertruck things, uh, those bottle openers for free, $25 worth for free, or I'd like to get two books, or as I just said the other day, I'm now going to let you have one of these and one audio book if you join at the $10 level. And then, oh, but you could get these for $25 too. Anyway, all the information is down below in the description. And uh, yeah, what else? I think that's all. Oh, is there anything I should tell you to go back and look at? Um, you know, actually, Normally, good news Monday or whatever, you know, we're talking about the the inventory, the uh, what we heard during the day and whatnot and and how the stocks ended for the day and stuff. But you know what? The one I did last night with Larry, uh, it was really, really special. It was really good. <laughs> we really talked a lot about this recessionary environment again. I know you don't want to hear about it. We got to hear about it. OK, we got to take the negative things. <laughs> I hate it. Listen, I'm with you. I don't want to talk about the negatives. I don't want to talk about a recession, but we got to be, got to, got to think those things through because there's different ways to act if there's actually going to be a recession coming up. So go back and look at that. I'll put the card right there. And other than that, it has been great talking to you.